being a physician assistant is one of the best things that I've ever done. Uh, I feel like it is a great profession if you want to work in medicine, but also be able to work closely with patients, see patients, have time to see patients, and as well as have a good quality of life outside of the center. My name is Eden Dupont. I'm a physician assistant at Health Science Center in Winnipeg. I graduated from the University of Manitoba master's program. Prior to becoming a physician assistant, I had my degree in uh, the Bachelor of Science in Microbiology. I worked at the National Microbiology Lab in the Viral SCDs and Viral Exanthema Lab, and then transitioning to the Biorepository Laboratory. Uh, aside from that, I was involved in dance and musical theater. Also a lot of uh, volunteering with a group called Villa Rosa, a place for uh, pregnant youth, as well as the Need Center, which is with refugee students. And um, how did you hear about the PA profession? I heard about it twice. Uh, first time was when I was in my undergrad degree, and I didn't really look hard on it because uh, it needed healthcare experience prior to, and I didn't have. Uh, secondly, was when I was working in the lab and I was having some free time, waiting for some of my samples to get ready. And at that point, I was looking for other programs to look into, either doing a master's in uh, medical microbiology or looking into medicine. And then I noticed that in the um, profile of the page, it said that it does not require healthcare hours anymore so I called the program maybe twice that day just confirming so that I could apply. What really drawn me to the uh, physician assistant career is that it allows you to work in different specialties especially if you want to learn different things. It also allows you a good quality of life so uh, being that the program is only two years that was a good chunk of time to spend studying as well as the hours required for working where you could do call shifts, you could do daytime shifts, there's just a little bit more flexibility in time. Mm -hmm. And Manitoba's PA program is the only master's in Canada. So what tips would you have for students in terms of uh, applying and ensuring that you're competitive? So for the University of Manitoba, I find that um, a lot of the times we look for things outside the box a little bit more, uh, people volunteering a lot more, people who have their more original ideas. I found that that just kind of sticks out. Uh, of course you need your basic sciences and um, your work ethic there, uh, but I think we look for people that are, um, they have that drive to do a little bit more. Just looking for myself when I do some interviews sometimes, I just, there's this uh, passion where they've looked into the program, the PA program, they've kind of had an idea of uh, what PAs have done and what they would like to do if they were a PA. So just a little bit more research in the capabilities of what a PA can do. And what was your experience of Manitoba's PA program? It was quite uh, a I would say just a big rush of a lot of information. Uh, the first year was a big blur, although it was a great time being able to um, learn about the medicine. Uh, it was just a good time with spending with the group and learning, uh, just a lot of learning. So the first year uh, PA program is didactic. There's three semesters when I was there. I'm not sure if it's changed. It's been about five years now. Uh, it kind of does an overlapping of starting off with uh, basic sciences like biochemistry, physiology, and then adding the medicine uh, as the year goes, as well as continuing the physical examination and clinical skills at the beginning. There's a little thing we call early exposure, so uh, you get to see or a shadow of PA or a doctor every week and just kind of see how the flow goes. Uh, every week there was always a test or a presentation that we had to do uh, from different uh, courses, especially we were part of, there was like a research portion that we were getting started with and uh, just some reflection classes as well. Second year PA school again was um, a big challenge in the fact that we were separated. So you become close with this group of 12, you're really good friends and then when you go out to your rotations, you're separated with the med students so you don't have kind of that, um, that support with someone else. So initially you do pretty much all of your uh, core rotations in Winnipeg. There's different hospitals there that we do. Um, I was fortunate enough to be able to go to the Acadia Diamond Mine up by Yellowknife to see occupational medicines. That was interesting. Um, but uh, it was a 
a big learning curve to kind of match yourself with the med students when you're alone in that group setting. And would you say that your clinical roles and responsibilities were similar to third or fourth year med students? Um, yes, but it was quite a big, I guess, learning curve again to get to that level, especially uh, just being with the people was kind of hard to find your, where you fit in, especially because a lot of the physicians that are teaching don't know what a physician assistant is. So how did you navigate that? Was there a lot of education around? That? Yes. So especially with the uh, supervising or like the attending at the time, um, they would always ask, like, what are you expected to do? And, and I would uh, educate them at what uh, we can do and kind of to continue to teach us similar to the med students. Mm -hmm. And did the PA program prepare you to have those type of conversations? Yes, uh, especially um, in our classes we had a lot of that elevator speech I'm sure everyone knows about, about what a PA does. And especially with ex early exposures and seeing PAs working, you get to see uh, what the extent that we could do. Mm -hmm. And can you tell us a little bit about the capstone project? Because yes. we don't have that here in yes. Ontario. So um, the capstone pro project, it could be either uh, a review of the different papers, whatever area your specialty you'd like, or it could be an original piece of research. Usually it's something geared towards PAs, so that's kind of a quicker uh, survey-like research project. Um, a lot of my classmates did uh, uh, paper reviews with different physicians that they were interested in in the topics like endocrine or GI, uh, cardiology, those things. Um, for me, I did a survey of 10 students across, or graduates of PAs across Canada of, of emergency medicine and how they felt whether they were prepared from the PA program to work in emergency medicine. Mm -hmm. And is that something you started first year or second year? Uh, usually second year. The first year they did prepare you with how to create your PICO question and kind of how to navigate through research papers. That was kind of the basics of how to start. And then the second year was when you formulate your question and then they find you a mentor and then you get started. How did the job hunt work for graduates of the Manitoba program? Because I know this was five years ago. Yeah, we were actually quite a lucky class because they presented us with a package of available uh, jobs in the province so I'm, I'm sure there was maybe there was over the amount that of the people that were graduating so 12 but they're not all in Winnipeg so there were some in the north some in the rural areas and we had a time uh, frame to apply to the ones we want and then there was an interview session and then we all had jobs by the time we graduated Wow. Mm -hmm. Is that still the case for grads now? No, unfortunately. Um, I'm not too familiar, but there are times now where the jobs are just posted. It's just a public post now in the Manitoba network online, and anyone can... Do you still keep in touch with your classmates? Yes, uh, some of my best friends, are, are, uh, I still see them. Uh, both of them are working as hospitalists now in the peripheral hospitals in Winnipeg. Uh, aside from that, I do, I do see the other ones because they do work at HSC as well. So there's one that works in plastics, uh, surgery, one that works in nephrology with the dialysis program. Mm -hmm. And then there's one in Calgary, I'm not sure what she's doing right now, and one that's working in emergency in New Brunswick. Mm -hmm. um, so your first job was as a hospitalist PA, and this was in rural Manitoba. Can you tell us a little bit about that job? Yes, sure. So uh, I worked there with one supervising physician during the week. So we had about 30-ish patient, patients, depending on the load. Uh, there was two floors that we were in charge of, the surgical floor. So that's primarily patients admitted with like pancreatitis, small bowel obstructions, uh, mostly that need medical management. And then there was a second floor that was mostly the internal medicine, um, more multiple issue case. So I was in charge of the first floor primarily, so I would be there usually before the physician, do my own rounds, do my own planning. Um, if there was any discharge, I would, I would do that myself as well. And then in the afternoon, I would go down and help the physician if she had any patients that needed help on the, on the first floor. So it was quite a very team effort uh, place to work it was very, and very autonomous as well. Mm -hmm. And when you say autonomous, were you mm -hmm. writing your own prescriptions, ordering your own tasks, or did you need to sign off from the physician, for example? Yeah. So um, as, as time went, because that was my first job, I would uh, 
if there was any admissions, they would tell me to see them. I would write my own tests, investigations, uh, order anything I need, as well as do the management during the week. And then if they were fine for discharge, I would do the discharge as well. Sometimes the physician wouldn't see the patient, but they would be aware of them because I don't do call overnight, so then they would be responsible for them at that time. And how was working in rural Manitoba different than uh, like being a hospitalist in like an academic center in like Winnipeg? Mm -hmm. So um, when you're in a rural uh, area, you have, again, I mentioned more autonomy. So since there's not a lot of physicians on site, there's usually just the ones that round and the family doctors as well as emerge, you're responsible for your patient. So I did a lot more um, uh, discharge planning, a lot more family conferences with the family, so I was more of the point person unless I needed assistance from the physician if I wasn't able to understand or if there's something that they would want more information of. Um, in the rural, in the, sorry, in the uh, city, it's just there is more formality with rounding and because our patients, this is a specialty case, there's a lot more influence with other services that needs to be there. Okay. You currently work in a different specialty now, so what made you decide to make the switch? Yeah, so, uh, so unfortunately I did uh, we're, live in Winnipeg and I was commuting about an hour and during one of the winters I had a um, pretty bad rollover accident. Oh, yeah. yeah, so at that point um, I didn't have any physical injuries, which is great, but I was looking for jobs in Winnipeg. So initially when that job was posted, I didn't really look at it, but my husband, who's a pediatric pharmacist in bone marrow transplant, he was saying how it was like the best medicine to, to learn, and he calls it kind of like magic science. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he um, gave me that uh, drive to, and passion to look into it further and apply. Okay, and what's the specialty that you work in? I work in, um, the ward I work in is called acute leukemia bone marrow transplant, so it's a section of hematology oncology. So um, a lot of what physician assistants in the ward do, we do a lot of supportive care for patients in hematology oncology. So as the word suggests, it's blood cancers. So that's uh, people admitted with leukemias, lymphomas, um, and anyone usually requiring high dose chemotherapy that requires to be admitted into hospital. And um, how do they orient a new hire to chemoc, to yeah. chemoc service? So fortunately, um, the service actually had uh, started out with uh, clinical assistants. So those are IMGs that uh, work similar, same job as what we do as a physician assistant. So they already had made a role for themselves and the ward was very aware of our role. So uh, initially they would be the ones to teach me the procedures that are required. So that's bone marrow biopsies, lumbar punctures with intrathecal chemotherapy, as well as skin biopsies. Uh, so that was a great way to just shadow and kind of see the management of things. But a lot of it was um, independent learning, especially because those uh, that specialty you don't learn in school. So if I saw a new case, I would spend that night reading the case, as well as all the chemotherapy drugs that were new. I would, uh, especially with my husband being a pharmacist and knowing the drugs, he assisted me in creating a list of all the side effects to watch out for and how to manage that on the ward. And um, are there other procedures that you do as well? Lumbar punctures, bone marrow, uh, bone marrow biopsies, and the skin biopsies. Sometimes we do help depending on the, um, the type of sample the patient needs. We do bone marrow harvest, so that's in the OR with the attending. Uh, do they teach you how to do that, or do you go to a workshop to get those competencies? So actually the uh, CAs and the other PA that works there taught me how to do it. So I would uh, watch, and then they would watch me. Like, see one, do one, or teach one. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And what does a typical day in the life of um, your workplace look like? Yeah, so uh, since there's five of us, we do have call shifts. So there's different shifts that are there. Uh, so there's one PA or CA that works in the evening. But in the day, uh, we do pre rounds So usually see our patients. We divide it amongst ourselves depending on who is there. And then during that time, we do the bone marrow biopsies that we need depending on the patient. Uh, around in the mid-morning, then the attending would come and we would do rounds. And that would include a lot of um, uh, health, allied health, including pharmacy, dietitian, social worker, and nursing. So we would do pretty intense rounds with each patient, going through what they need, and 
coming up with a plan and any consults that we would need to call. Uh, and then afterwards, we would do any um, admissions. Usually they're planned if they're doing for transplant, but it, they could be unplanned depending on different side effects that people are having outside of the ward. Uh, that can include um, things like febrile neutropenic episodes and uh, graft-versus-host disease kind of effects of patients post-transplant. And then in the afternoons is when we usually do our lumbar punctures with intrathecal chemo. Mm -hmm. And if there was a PA student interested in doing a rotation or preparing mm -hmm. for a job in hemo, now that you're in this field looking back, what would you recommend they use to prepare? Um, a lot of it has the basis of just basic internal medicine, so that would be good to have a good foothold on managing, managing a heart failure, pneumonias, uh, seeing arrhythmias like AFib, because a lot of the side effects are similar to what you would see. Uh, on top of that, there is a lot of extra layers that you need to learn, especially uh, chemo chemotherapy is one. And there's also a big social aspect to it as well, as caring for these patients is, is quite sensitive for them because they do get a, a diagnosis and require to be admitted and stay in hospital for months for a treatment usually. So um, there's a lot of learning. I would say the first thing to do is there's a website called Be The Match and it has a lot of just B BMT 101 and a lot of modules just to start out if you feel like you'd be interested in it. Have you ever had any students rotate on your service? Any TA students or other medical learners? Mm -hmm. As learners go, usually our ward uh, usually takes more of the our residents, like our fives or fellows. We, we kind of rarely see med medical students, so it's primarily ran by CAPAs. PAs are regulated in Manitoba, so what hmm. does regulation mean? Well, as you graduate as a PA and you find a position, you're supposed to get uh, licensed by the uh, College of Physicians and Surgeons of Manitoba. So with that, that requires a contract between uh, the college that states who your supervising physicians are as well as kind of the roles that you're expected to do and, uh, and your signature as well. Mm -hmm. And how are positions funded in Manitoba? So our positions currently are funded through the province. So um, right now there's different regional authorities and we're kind of going through this change as well. Uh, but right now everything I've seen so far has been funded through the uh, province. Are PAs unionized in Manitoba? Yes. So that's one thing that's new within the last, I would say, three, four years. Uh, so the union, which is a great for us, uh, does a lot of contract building with all the different regional authorities and allows uh, good communication for pay for, for uh, your length of time working, as well as call, because a lot of us do call shifts there. Are there any restrictions on PA practice, like anything that, that you can't do but maybe a resident or physician can? Um, currently, the one I can't think of anything that is limited at us. As long as the physician is able to do a certain procedure and teach us, then we're able to do it. Uh, there are certain chemotherapies that we're not allowed to to sign, um, but then they would just co-sign it for us. But aside from that, we have pretty much um, able to manage our patients in the hospital. Okay. Does that include um, prescription and medications, including things like narcotics or controlled substances? Yeah. So as an inpatient, we're able to prescribe opioids and um, benzos as need be. Uh, and in the outpatient world, you need a triplicate form for opioids, and that usually the physician has. So we usually just fill that out, and then they would co-sign that. And how do you how do PAs interact with physicians? Mm -hmm. So for us, we have a very um, trusting relationship, especially uh, us being on the ward more often than the physician. Uh, we work as a team base, so a lot of the time when we're there, we are the ones that see the patient. We, we've already managed a lot of the, the things that need to be done that day, so it's a lot of communication with the physician and trust. Okay, so um, how do you interact as a PA with nurses or other allied health? Sure. So um, our ward is very fortunate that we work in a very big team and we're all uh, get along very well. So uh, with nurses, because I do call a lot, I have to trust them as well, same relationship as with the physicians. Since I'm sometimes doing home call, it's nice to know and trust the, the nurse that 
as how the patient's doing and whether or not I need to come to assess the patient. Uh, in terms of the um, other hallowed health, we work very um, closely, especially with social worker, because they uh, manage a lot of their finances and, and work because it is such a big change from being at home to being admitted to the hospital, as well as physio and occupational therapy when uh, discharge planning comes closer. Mm -hmm. Any tips for um, new PA grads or PA students who are starting rotations? Um, how should they be interacting or learning about these different professions they may interface with? Yeah, so I've worked a lot with uh, Allied Health as well in rural, um, that I was working in the rural hospital. So I find that it's the best way is just to listen and to communicate both ways because uh, they have different aspects of the situation that you might not understand or know and just it's a good learning process to to continue to work together to find uh, the best thing for the patient. Uh, how similar is um, the PA role to a nurse practitioner or to a physician would you say? Um, I've worked, I haven't worked with a nurse practitioner directly. Uh, I, uh, I do know some of them because a lot of them have gone through the program after working with myself. So at this point, uh, what I've seen so far is nurse practitioners, they work more in the outpatient uh, area and um, have their own patient cohort and they still have an attending physician that they communicate with, um, but they are functioning autonomously, uh, whereas with um, physician assistants, we are attached with our attending physician. Mm -hmm. And um, what difference do you think the services have seen since adding PAs? Yeah, so uh, since I'm the fifth kind of extended or uh, what would say ex um, advanced practitioner on the ward, uh, there was a lot already done when I was there. So it, it really enhances the communication aspect between uh, nursing if they need orders when the physician is not there and if there's something that needs to be assessed, we're able to start things off or even if need be go transfer a patient to ICU if needed um, and it helps with the physician because the physician is able it's able to reduce their workload in terms of call and seeing patients because they have their clinics as well that they do at the same time on the board so it gives them time to to spend more time on patients that require it. And do you have one supervising physician or do you work with the entire department and see everybody's patients? So at this point there are five that do the bone marrow transplant ward uh, at that and now they're actually extending our practice to do clinics for procedures. So we'll be working with more hematologists. And do you do anything outside of your clinical role as a PA? Yeah, so uh, currently I've been um, trying to do some networking with a group called CTTC. It's called uh, Cell Therapy Transplant Canada. And I'm trying to create a advanced practitioner group uh, to communicate different uh, styles of practice with nurse practitioners, clinical assistants, and physician assistants working in, working in bone marrow transplant across Canada. If there was uh, a hospital or a department or a physician that's interested in working with the PA, um, what can they expect or what advice would you give them? The more you put into a PA, the more you teach them, the more you guide them, the more that the PA could give back. I find that if you lead them, then they'll able to gain their own confidence and be able to trust you. So it's a, it's a very, I find, um, it's the relationship that builds the PA. Well, first figuring out what works for the PA in terms of learning, because some PAs like uh, getting homework or some like one-on-one -on -one teaching. Um, for me, I was lucky enough for my first uh, physician working in Steinbach. He was giving me one-on-one -on -one time with the different cases that we'd see and review it. And that gave me the confidence to go for the next uh, case I would see to do the same thing. So um, I think when some a PA, a new grad, comes out, it's best to start off with that close contact and close uh, uh, lecture type style of learning. And then just to continue to build that trust by giving them more uh, autonomy and um, uh, that communication starts to go two ways instead of just one. How do you keep up with CME or um, keeping on top of current knowledge in your area of uh, expertise? Mm -hmm. So in my area, there's a lot of new therapies that happen a lot. So there's a lot of new drugs that we don't even know what, what uh, 
their side effects are. So a lot of times it's spent using up to date. Uh, a lot of time there we have CME lectures that they put on for us uh, through the CTTC as well as um, there's a lot of uh, CME credits that are online through the states as well. Um, but a lot of it is just reading every day, especially if there's something new that happens. And if uh, I don't understand anything, asking the attending, because sometimes you just, you need to know when your limitations are and when you need to ask for help. <laughs> and any conferences that you've been to? Yeah, so I've been to, um, Two regarding my specialty, so that one is called ASBMT, and that one is through the states, and that was with nurse practitioners and physician assistants. With that, it was a lot of uh, ward management uh, lectures on patients receiving bone marrow transplants, what to expect, uh, long-term care, and it was a great way to see how people do it in different centers, especially with uh, nurse practitioners and PAs, and how they're just kind of intertwined together. So the roles are pretty much the same. Um, and then I did the CTTC just recently in Calgary, that and that's the Cell Therapy Transplant Canada. We just changed the name because of uh, there's this new therapy called CAR-T that we're going to start. So um, with that, uh, I was able to see all the different centers in Canada that do bone marrow transplant, and again, see the different types of uh, practitioners that work. So a lot of the times there are um, nurse practitioners. I think physician assistants are only in Manitoba at this point, but they do also work with uh, hospitalists. So that's physicians that work similar world to what we do. What's your elevator pitch for what is a PA? So a physician assistant, I would say, is a um, medical provider that can diagnose and treat patients as well as prescribe medications. Um, we're similar to, sometimes I, I say, a resident that never leaves. <laughs> and when you say quality of life, um, what kind of differences are between like a PA versus MD? So just working with other physicians and PAs, we work uh, 40 hours a week and, and then if you need call you could do call but with physicians their work never leaves when uh, they leave the hospital whereas we can and leave that at home uh, the physician requires to be on call and requires to continue to manage the patients long term so it just depends on what you you like but uh, I like being able to to remove myself and be able to just enjoy life do you have any tips for new grads in terms of orienting themselves to um, a new specialty because there's a bit of a learning curve I find that you're kind of learning how to be a PA mm -hmm. in addition to learning the medicine of it so mm -hmm. how can you balance that and sort of prove your value when you're first working? I would say um, as a new grad there's a lot of expectations that you put on yourself and, and a lot of it is just you need time to learn so you have to kind of carry yourself in a way where you're learning and working and I know that's a dual kind of thing going on but you, it takes time you have to know it takes time to be confident uh, just make sure you ask questions if you need read up on any of the new cases that you see and don't be afraid to ask your attending or anyone the nurses are very very uh, informative because they see the same patients as well um, and for, kind of find a good support group and network. Uh, sometimes if you don't have that opportunity, um, just finding uh, another PA, even if they don't work with you, but just to see kind of the, not necessarily the medicine aspect, but even just the um, social aspect working with these different groups of people uh, is, is, is sometimes difficult.